McNabb, denied! An America East Championship for UMBC. Coming up on the season debut of America East on campus, a look at the teams who have taken titles so far this year and how the race for titles in men's and women's basketball is shaping up. And gets the a look at a year like no other for Stony Brook. Where we want to go as a league in the future and who might best fit. A look back and a look ahead from Commissioner Amy Huckthausen and America East teams up with You Can Play to send an important message. All now on America East on campus. There were quite a few wins here at Laval Stadium on the campus of Stony Brook University in 2012. It's our home as we start a new season of America East on campus. And Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Eric Freed. This is where we tell the stories of the student athletes of the America East Conference. And here at Stony Brook, 2012 was a great year. We'll talk more about that as we go along. But it's time to start taking a look forward. And believe it or not, in just a couple of weeks, lacrosse season will start and this is where the america east lacrosse championship will take place this coming spring as for the sports of winter let's get you caught up to date on what's going on in men's and women's basketball last season ended with vermont celebrating an america east tournament championship on stony brook's home floor and this season could very well end up with those two teams meeting again both sides strong in non-conference play and started league play with statement wins. For Stony Brook, there's a little sense of payback on their minds after winning the regular season title last year, pulling out a thrilling win in the semifinals, but coming up short in the title game. We lost four guys who signed pro contracts, so we lost four pros at this level, which is a hard thing to do, and those seniors from last year logged a ton of minutes. So uh, we blended some new freshmen with some veteran returning guys who had to take on different roles. Um, and you, you know, then our veterans uh, that had played a lot of minutes had to you know, do even more for us. But it's Vermont's title until someone takes it from the Catamounts. With tournament stars Brian Volkel and Sandro Carissimo back to lead the Cats, they know what it takes to win the title and have the pieces to repeat. We're not sneaking up on anyone. We're going to take everyone's best punch, and, and people are going to have our game circled and, and, and things like that. And I think those expectations, um, I think we're learning to deal with those. I think um, that's um, something that last year we didn't have. But those two teams will have company. Albany behind Mike Black and the sharpshooting Jacob Yachty had perhaps the most impressive non-conference run of any team in the league. And will get the added boost of hosting the America East Championship. Boston University will put all they have into making the most of the regular season playing for that championship. And with DJ Irving leading a group that has a healthy mix of new faces, they can win on any given night. And that might be the theme this year. From Maine to Hartford and all spots in between, there are plenty of teams that have the personnel to win on any given night, making the conference schedule that much more compelling leading up to the America East Tournament. We're one bid. And so everyone's fighting for that one bid. And you got to go to a neutral site at Albany and win it this year. Last year was Hartford. So you're going to someone else's gym too. So uh, a lot of pressure so that weekend in March. Um, you know, that really defines your, your program. For the first time, Albany won the America East Women's Championship and a spot in the NCAA tournament. And if the early going of the America East season is any indication, they're not resting on their laurels. With Ebony Henry and Julie Forster leading the way, the defending champions have the look of back-to-back -back champions, but it will take some hard work to get back to the top. Henry draws a crowd and gets the hook and gets the foul. During the regular season, Boston University will be a formidable obstacle to the number one seed. The Terriers are all in for the 16-game league schedule, trying to leave the league with a regular season title on the backs of their four-year fixtures. Chantel Alford and Mo Moran with plenty of experienced help. Hartford has plenty of experience as well. Along with BU, they've been in the middle of the national mid-major poll thanks to a strong non-conference schedule. The Hawks hit a couple of bumps to start league play. While those three try to separate themselves from the rest of the league, others say not so fast. 
Stony Brook has put together a remarkable turnaround in Bethel Boyle's second year on the job, surpassing last year's win total by the middle of December. You know, it's been a really good start for our program. Um, I think, you know, as we're building, you know, we've gotten some good wins that have uh, helped us with some confidence. And from there, we've been really, you know, able to, to really push the tempo in games and then defend really hard. So while there are three teams that look like they could pull away from the field, the rest of the league is ready to pull them back. The parity in this league is great. I think that every team knows that they're beatable on any given night if they don't show up or if someone has a bad game and uh, you have a, a good game. So it's just, it's a lot of fun. I think that the coaches all appreciate the other teams in the league. There's a healthy respect and it's just, it's all out war. And so it's its great. Like that's, that's as a competitor, that's what you want. We go and dance and win! Coming up, a look at the champions from the fall season, including UMBC's memorable trip to the NCAA tournament, where they didn't give up a goal. That and more next on America East on campus. America East and the You Can Play Project are committed to ensuring equality, respect, and safety for all athletes without regard to sexual orientation or gender identity. Visit YouCanPlayProject.org for more information. Welcome back to America East on Campus here at Stony Brook University. Since this is the first show of a new season of America East on Campus, it's a perfect time to take a look back at the fall champions from around America East. At UNH, it was a clean sweep for Stony Brook in cross country. Familiar ground for the women who won their sixth straight title. New Hampshire's Keeley McGuire used a big kick to pull away and win the race, but four Seawolves finished in the top ten led by Olivia Byrne and Cleo Boyd, helping to give the Seawolves the championship. For the Stony Brook men, this was new territory. Sophomore Eric Speakman improved on a third place finish from a year ago and crossed the line first, paving the way for the Seawolves to win their first ever America East title. There was a lot of pressure on the women year after year to continue on, and they believe that tradition doesn't graduate. And so they, when they get to conference championship, they understand what it means to do it. For the men, it was fantastic, and, and to get the win was, was awesome. And to do both on the one day, you know, which it hadn't been done since, I think, 2003, was fantastic. And for the first time in school history, Stony Brook claimed an America East Women's Soccer Championship, knocking off number one seed Hartford 1-0. Larissa Nish tallied the lone goal in the 13th minute, and the Seawolves made it stand up. Stony Brook became the first sixth seed to win the title and the first to win three road games en route to an America East championship. Stony Brook advanced to the NCAA tournament, losing to ninth-ranked Maryland in the first round. In field hockey, the Great Danes of Albany nailed down their third America East championship in five years with a dominant 3-1 win over defending champion and number one seed UNH. First team all-conference selection Corinne McConville scored two goals and tourney most outstanding player Daphne Warmelin Tally the game winner, tying a league record with four goals and eight points in the tournament. The Great Danes outshot the Wildcats 19-4, earning the number 17 seed in the NCAA tournament where they would fall to number three seed, Penn State 2-1. It didn't come easy, but number two seed Binghamton took out number one Albany in straight sets to claim the America East Volleyball Championship. The Bearcats cruised in the first set, but were down 18-7 in the second and 16-9 in the third and roared back in both to clinch victory. Grace Vickers had 10 kills and was named most outstanding player. Binghamton faced number one overall seed Penn State in the NCAAs and fell in three sets. What a finish for the UMBC Retrievers in men's soccer. No goals against for the entire postseason. Winning the America East title over UNH in penalty kicks for the second time in the last three years. The scoreless game, a nail-biter throughout. New Hampshire's Travis Wara was terrific in net, shutting down UMBC with seven saves. And the Retrievers' Phil Saunders was his equal and more, taking most outstanding player honors and stopping Ryan McNabb to seal the win. America East Championship for UMBC. In the NCAAs, two more nothing-nothing games, winning a shootout over Old Dominion. They took North Carolina to penalty kicks before losing 3-2 but it was an amazing run for the Retrievers. I'm proud of our performance in the playoffs in the NCAA tournament and in the game against North Carolina, our crowd came down in three bus loads and for a conference like the America East to have their champion go down and play against defending national champions 
take over the stadium, it really should support that we have here at UNBC and in the America East for soccer. Still to come, what a year it was for Stony Brook. A look back at some of the moments that will last a lifetime from 2012 when America East on campus continues. Don't miss your team's chance to dance at the 2013 America East Men's and Women's Basketball Championship presented by CEFQ. Join us at CEFQ Arena from March 8th through the 10th. Ticket packages are on sale now. Call 518-442-DANE or visit AmericaEast.com. Welcome back to America East on campus. Yes, we've turned the page to a new year, 2013, but 2012 is a year they will not forget here at Stony Brook University. What do you say about 2012? What an incredible year to be a Seawolf. Then again, every year is a great year to be a Seawolf, but 2012 was just a little bit different than the rest. Edward, swing and a miss, and Stony Brook, you have shot the world. The Seawolves are headed to Omaha. No other team symbolized what it means to be a Seawolf in the 2012 baseball team at Stony Brook. 52 and 15, record setting year go to Alex Box Stadium where nobody wins, go down one game to nothing, come back and win two out of three. Takes us to the College World Series. The first time uh, East Coast team has been to the College World Series in over 25 years. Matt Sank was the National Coach of the Year, seven guys drafted. That is a special season and the best is yet to come. The men's lacrosse team won yet another America East Conference title, following up on 2011 and 2010. For the fourth year in a row, the Stony Brook Seagulls football program retained and won yet another conference championship in their fourth straight rank. Highlighted by a win at Army and a home NCAA playoff win versus CAA power Villanova. The best part of the year might be that we had the runner-up for the National Player of the Year in the great Miguel Masonet. In 2012, Seabulls men's basketball won yet another America East regular season title. And in 2013, we are ready to take the next step. Seawolves cross country is swept on the men's and women's side for the first time in history, highlighted by the sixth straight title for the Seawolves women. And for the first time in school history, Stony Brook women's soccer won an America East Conference Championship. And as proud as I am of the accomplishments on the fields and on the courts, I'm most excited and most proud of our Seawolves outside the classroom, outside the field of play, and in the community. Especially in the wake of Superstorm Sandy that had a dramatic effect on not just our local community, but the community of Long Island. I'm so proud to be a Seawolf, knowing that our Seawolves are out supporting our community. As incredible as 2012 was for Seawolves Nation, 2013 might be just a little bit better. Up next on America East on Campus, Commissioner Amy Huchthausen on helping guide the league through some turbulent times in college athletics. We're being deliberate, but still active, you know, in terms of what we're looking at, how, how often we're engaged on the subject, and certainly where we fit within the broader conference landscape. You can earn rewards just for supporting America East. Download the free Enthuse app for iPhone or Android and start collecting points by checking in at games and completing challenges with other America East fans. Redeem the points for America East swag, tickets, and more. Welcome back to America East on Campus here on the campus of Stony Brook University. It's time for our conversation with Commissioner Amy Huchthausen, who takes a look back at 2012 and a look ahead at what's to come for America East. Yeah, it certainly has been um, a lot of activity in the conference landscape, not just with the America East. So there's a lot of activity still um, percolating out there, and we're not immune from that. Um, you know, we're finishing up this year with nine schools. Right now we're entering next year with eight schools, and what it's really given our presidents and ADs a chance to really reflect and think about where they want this conference to go in the future. So while it's disappointing to lose a member, it's certainly been a great opportunity to sit back and take stock of you know the America East Conference and where, like I said, where we want to go as a league in the future and who might best fit with us as we move ahead. Mostly the academic fit is, is of utmost importance to our presidents. 
Um, you know, there are lots of different schools out there, but when you look at our institutions, you know, we have primarily public research institutions, um, several in the top 200 um, nationally ranked. So those are the type of institutions that we're looking at, um, institutions that are really committed to a broad-based athletics program who don't focus almost exclusively on one sport or two sports like we see some of our other conferences doing. Uh, we've got schools that are successful in a number of sports, whether they're American eSports or not American eSports, and I think that adds to the richness of the institution locally, but then for the conference as a whole. We certainly understand the history of this league, the different changes, um, the successes. Now we're looking forward, and in this turbulent time, I think it's very refreshing to have a group of presidents take a good, sort of clean, fresh look about where they want this league to go in the future. This past fall was a really good one again for our America East sports. Probably the highlight for me was watching UMBC men's soccer advance into the second round of the NCAA tournament, which is something that our teams in that sport consistently do. We're really excited about our women's basketball uh, coming off of the non-conference season. We had two teams consistently ranked in the mid-major top 25 with Hartford and BU. And so when you add Albany to that mix, it's, a, it's three top teams heading into the conference season. It's going to be a real exciting race. That's been a priority for us over the last year and a half since I've started here is taking advantage and really growing in the digital and emerging technologies. I think that's a great way for us to connect with our fans more than we ever have before. People are always on devices, whether they're students, parents, grandparents, so we need to be in that space. And I think we've done a good job advancing what we've done, growing what we've done. Um, our metrics from our social media already just this year have, have skyrocketed, so we're very pleased with that. And as we look look for, look ahead in terms of what how we might be able to bring our content, our game content, onto tablets and those types of devices, that's something we're, we're continuing to explore. Certainly we have a very diverse student body nowadays, and that means our student athlete body is just as diverse. And it's really important to uh, make sure that all of our student athletes, our coaches, our administrators, feel that they can play their sport, go to work, go to school, go to practice, uh, play in a game, and be be respected and be treated fairly. And uh, the mission of You Can Play, an objective of You Can Play to make sure that everyone's treated fairly so that they can maximize their performance uh, really speaks to what the America East is about. Trying to give every student athlete, every coach, uh, every administrator their best chance to succeed. And I think the partnership with You Can Play allows our student athletes to be able to do that. And more on the You Can Play partnership with America East is coming up. Student athletes from around the league reminding teammates simply, if you can play, you can play. Connect with America East through its social media channels on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and the AE Extra blog. Whether it's Monday Rewind, Trivia Tuesday, Who Knew Wednesday, Throwback Thursday, or Fan Friday, America East is the source for your social media needs. The America East Conference and its member schools have started a partnership with You Can Play. What is You Can Play? Let's take a closer look at the organization and its ties to America East. If you can score, you can score. If you can run, you can run. You can hit, you can hit. If you can dive, you can dive. If you can shoot, you can shoot. If you're willing to give every ounce of energy in your body to win, you can play. Our message is pretty simple. If you're good enough to be on the team, to contribute to a winning team, then it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight, you're on the team. If you can play, you can play. We are all united behind our teammates, gay or straight. Gay or straight. Gay or straight. The America East Conference is proud to join the You Can Play Project in supporting lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender student athletes, coaches, and fans. It's full buy-in from a conference, which is unprecedented and something that gives LGBT athletes hope. It's spreading everywhere within schools and within professional teams, and I think that's great that America East is partnering with it because it just shows that we are committed to creating an inclusive environment not only in one school, but several schools. I think the LGBT athletes that are taking those steps and, and really inviting us into their lives and letting that part of them be known, um, like a Kaylee Wood at University of Vermont, like I think that is amazing that uh, what she's done coming out and rallying the athletic department around her 
It puts a human face on an issue that a lot of times doesn't have a human face. I think people treat me different way, differently, but in a good way, because they're like, oh, well, like, you know, that's, like, that's Kaylee, that's the girl on, um, you know, that's the out girl on um, the cross country team. And I think that I've actually like given more respect for it because I can just be proud of who I am. And um, I think that I actually gain more respect from that. It's so much easier if you can stand up uh, a Kaylee Wood or uh, you know, any of the numerous LGBT athletes who have come out in the last decade or so and say, look, this is Kaylee. She's on your team. She's fast. What else do you care about? We should all be measured on the same playing field of our athletic ability. And so like if you can play, you can play. Like, and I just think that's like such a catchy term, but also um, it has like such power behind it. If you can play, you can play. 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 If you can run, you can run. If you can play, you can play. And that will do it for this edition of America East on Campus. For our crew, I'm Eric Fried. So long from Stony Brook University.